Greetings all, it's the Devious Monkey here. And yes, Thursday is the big reveal day. I got all the parts in this morning and put everything together and now I'm done. I got my little setup here all done. So I have mentioned before that I watch DSLR video shooters videos and that he's had some great ideas. Now this was something that he came up with a while ago and I had always intended to try to put it together and then life got in the way and then I decided to like use my money for other stuff like cameras and lenses. Since that's all done, I decided that it was now time to change things up and I told you I was gonna maybe pull the shelves out or I was going to paint the wall, put new stuff in here, whatever. And then I thought to myself, you know what? Maybe I should go back and revisit that video and get all the stuff together and do this build out. And then I can go anywhere I want, not only in my place, but anywhere else I want to go. So this is what I've built. Here you see the, like the mobile studio in a stand. And it has obviously the rolling stand and then all these add-ons to give me lighting, audio, and power. And then I threw in the Ninja because, I mean, shit, I've got it, I might as well use it. And it makes it more convenient for me to look at that than it does to look at that tiny ass screen that is now blocked by cables and door flaps that are open. So this is it. This was the great reveal and it is awesome. I don't have the sandbags on here right now because it's shitty out and I don't feel like going out and digging up wet sand. So I'm gonna wait for that for a while. And for now, I don't even really need it because this thing ain't gonna tip over. The big difference for me compared to DSLR videos build out is that he had a big ass like six, seven, eight hundred dollar light panel that's probably twice the size, if not bigger than mine. And it like I just don't need something that big. I also wasn't gonna spend six or seven hundred dollars on it. Other stuff I had available, like I had this microphone stand available, and right now, since I have it and I like it, I'm using the Sennheiser MKE 400, like the version two, and that's plugged in there, and I have the extension cable and all that stuff was already ready, and that was pretty much it. So this didn't cost as much as his build out. His build out though included the really expensive lights that he was using, though I think those might even have been like over a grand. He was also including the cost of the camera and everything into that, and I didn't. I'll, I'll put it all in the description, and I'll put links to it to where I got it. I, again, I had ordered everything from Amazon, and some of it wasn't going to be here for another few weeks at least. And when I went to B&H, they had everything ready to ship. So I bought a couple of these pieces again, and then I canceled the Amazon stuff, and everything was either in already uh, Monday, some came in yesterday, and some came in today. The rest came in today. Everything went together, like it's just so simple. I mean, it's not that hard to put a clamp on there and tighten it down and to twist a spigot in or, or get it clamped off. And then basically just kind of maneuvering things into a way that, that works well. So the light, and you'll see this, the light I have off sort of to my left and above the camera so that it's not right on the camera. And, and I think this looks perfect. And I don't even know how much I turned it up to. I, I'm still certain that it's turned down fairly low. The only thing that had concerned me was the distance between me and the camera and the microphone. So right now, again, I kind of have myself situated between the corner of the, of the office slash studio and the camera, which I have pushed almost all the way back into that corner with all the, you know, the furniture and the equipment. So I'm kind of halfway in between. And if I really extend myself out, I can, I can touch the, the microphone, the, the tip of the microphone. By looking at the audio feed there, I can see that, that it's, it's actually going up high, which is fine because then I can go in, into the editing software and I can pull it down a little bit. So I have it basically, I'm, I'm going to say it's about about two-ish feet away from me and I have it pointing directly at my face so that it, uh, hopefully it picks it up. 
Now, of course, I have kind of an echo going on in here because I have all these walls and all this wood and everything and the glass of the window, so it might be, it might have a little bit of a, of, of a reverb. I don't know, I'll find out. And normally, I always use my Rode Wireless Go too, so it's always right there by my throat and it picks it up extra loud and then I turn it down in post and everything's fine. So it might take a little bit of getting used to for me to hear my voice through this. I have found that I cannot take that on the road with me because if I put that in the Forerunner, like you can already hear all the road noise and everything, but if I just use that instead of having the road right here by my neck, it is unusable. But I, I pretty much figure in my, in my studio it shouldn't be too bad. Now I ended up switching the lens back to the 35G Master and actually I have it at 2.8. Let's change that. There, neat. Okay, so now I've fixed it. I have the ISO at 125 and I put the, the aperture back to f1.4. It was at 2.8 because that's what it was when I had the 16 to 35 on since it can only go to 2.8. Everything, like I have this thing plugged into the wall and the cord is long enough for me to go anywhere I need to go in this room. It, it really won't go any further than it is over there. So I have more than enough more than enough and it's actually kind of tangled a little bit so I have a little bit more room if I needed it but I don't think I would need any more than I am using right now so power isn't an issue I am if I remember because I'm like ooh shiny red ball doing things today if I remember I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna order the V mount battery since I can't use my gold mount battery and that way I can plug into that and if I needed to I could come out of that and plug into both the Ninja and I could use the uh, uh, USB-C off of one of the adapters to power the camera if I needed to. So right now, the Ninja does not have that much power because I'm using like a small RAV power battery and that's why I hate that. Because if I'm gonna be using this in studio, I don't wanna have to think about, oh shit, I'm gonna run out of battery, I have to charge it. In fact, I just got a warning light that came up said, I've got 10% battery life, so it's going down fast. And I can move this thing around anywhere I need to, if I want to. And I mean, I can show you that. Let's see if I can do it without tipping it over. So, you know, if I wanted to go in this direction, then I can put it into that corner. And now I can sit at my desk and I can do everything from here. The microphone is still, you know, like if I actually sit up. And of course my office chair is in like the grooves because it's been sitting in the same spot for so long. But I can right there touch the microphone and I'm still good to go. And the audio signal is, is still showing that it's got plenty of audio. It's not like it's like too low. I'd rather have it too high so I can turn it down than have it too low and not be able to turn it up high enough. And you can see everything, everything's blurred out behind me. I'm in frame and, and everything is good. And it's, well, it's focused on this eye. So all is good there. So yeah, I can spin this thing around and give different angles in here. I can move it into another room if I want to and you know, I could go into the library and use it there. I could take it downstairs, which is messy, so I wouldn't do that, but you get the idea. So I have everything really good to go. And of course, once I get the V-mount battery, then I can pop that on there instead of the power supply. And now I'm completely cord free uh, as far as power goes, because then everything else could plug into that V-mount with, with the power supply uh, control module, I mean, and I could run the camera, the lights, and well, I don't need to run the microphone because that has a, a battery in it and it lasts forever. So everything could run off of that one V-mount battery. And that was the whole point. So that's it. That's really all I needed to show you. I just wanted to wait until I got everything in and I got it all set up. But a big shout out to DSLR Video Shooter because this is an awesome idea. I love this. I've been wanting to do this since I first saw your video and now I was finally able to do it. So I'm gonna link his video, original video, because he gives a much better explanation of stuff and, and shows you how it all goes together. I didn't show you that. I just showed you after it was all put together. You, do you really need to see the monkey fumbling around with all this shit, you know? No, probably not. So that's it. That's all I've got for you. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them down below. As always, thanks for joining me. Be sure to like and subscribe, and remember kids, forward and up.